Hey Yaki Gang, Yaki Tori Guy here. This is our first video for 2021. First of all, let me say thank you to the Yaki Gang community who rallied at the end of the year to push me to 5,000 plus subscribers on this channel, which was my 2020 goal. Onwards onto more videos and let's aim for that 10K subscriber so that more people around the world can learn about the Kodawari Yaki like the ones made by the masters in Japan. Over the last few weeks, I went over all the longer format videos to find out what are the key points from each of those videos. I put together all of those information. These are the techniques that I've learned from the Yakitori Masters in Japan and the US, and I put it together into an easy to digest 10 minute video. Here's a sneak peek right here. For people to bite into, so this is where we can trim. By trimming the skewers, not only does it look consistent and prettier, it also cooks much more evenly. Season with salt on both sides. Make sure to subscribe so that you guys will be notified when the video releases next week. As I went through all the old videos and seeing the comments, I noticed that there are very common questions. And even though I replied to those comments, I see the same questions coming up. So I thought I'd take a moment today and answer them right here. So the number one question I get is, does tare go bad and how do I store it? I hope with this video, the frequency of that question will get down to zero. Like any organic matter, tare can go bad. However, like I've mentioned in all my videos where I'm using tare, my tare is now almost three years old. The shop that I was training at, their tare is 36 years old. I've eaten at a place that had a 50 year old tare, a 100 year old tare that's been passed down by generations. As long as you take care of your tare, tare can last for generations. How long your tare lasts really depends on how you're using it. Are you dipping fully cooked chicken into it or are you dipping raw chicken into it? As you're dipping it, are your dirty hands going into the tare? Are you keeping your tare in a very cold fridge? Is it stored outside? With so many variables, there's not exactly one answer on how to keep your tare, but let me give you some pointers here. When you're not using your tare, keep it covered, leave it in the fridge, and then reheat your tare in a pot on the stove every few weeks, every time you're about to use it, or when you're making new tare so you can add it into your mother pot. I've gone a month or two when I travel to Japan for my trainings of leaving my tare in the fridge and every time I come back I just make sure to smell it, just look at it, make sure nothing funky is going on, reheat it and it's been going well for the past three years. However, it's all going to depend on all the different variables I just mentioned. Hopefully this is an incentive for you guys to cook more yakitori so you can constantly heat up and use your tare so that your tare can last generations as well. What knife do you use and where do you buy them? As you may have seen my various tutorials, I have a variety of knives that I use, whether it's these paring knives, a petty knife, kitchen knife, cleavers. But mainly for my yakitori tutorials, you're gonna see me using my main kitchen knife, the gyuto, and this is a honeski or garaski. This tojiro gyuto is a stainless double beveled knife. It's a very versatile knife. Because it's stainless, I don't really have to worry too much about any rust or anything like that. It's also about $80 or so from maybe your local knife shops or on Amazon, so I really like using this. For my chicken cutting, you're gonna see me using my Misono Honeski or the Tojiro Garaski, Japanese chicken cutting knives. Both of these are stainless knives, very easy for me to use around the kitchen. In my first chicken cutting video, I talked more about these knives, so definitely go check that out. In terms of where to purchase knives like this, definitely check out some of your local shops. In Japan, I bought some of these knives in Kappabashi. It is a kitchenware district in Tokyo. So definitely when you guys can travel again, recommend going checking out Kappabashi. Locally in San Francisco, I will go to Berno Cutlery where very knowledgeable staff can answer any other questions you have about knives. I definitely recommend shopping local when you can, especially because the staff is really knowledgeable and you're really supporting local. However, if Amazon is much more convenient for you, I do have an Amazon shop. Just go to bit.ly slash YG shop. That's my yakitori store where basically I have all my favorite yakitori garnishes, equipment, including these knives. So I made it very easy for you guys to purchase it. Make sure to just purchase through that link so I get that few percent kickback and that really helps me continue this channel. Another question that I do get frequently is how to clean the grill. And I think most of the question is regarding the Live Art Grill, but the Live Art Grill, as long as the Yak Grill, the Bincho Grill, the videos that I've made so far, they're pretty much straightforward. Since they're all metal, all you need is after you're done with your yakitori, just take a wet pal and you should be able to wipe most of it off. So for the mesh grill top like this and the yakitori rods, 
just a soapy sponge in the sink. Now, if you have some gunked up, built up tare on here though, you're gonna have to get your steel wool out and use some elbow grease to basically scrub it clean. For the Live Art Grill, there's a drip tray on the bottom. Just make sure to use a paper towel to absorb any of that fat drippings and just get rid of that water and wash it in the sink. For any of the charcoal grills, basically just clear out the ash on the bottom. Do not let the fats or the ashes collect. It can be a fire hazard. Just have a good practice constantly. Always be taking care of your equipment and cleaning them all the time. What sake and mirin do you recommend for your tare or sake spray? So for the sake spray and the tare, I recommend using sake that you're willing to drink. And what I mean by that, it doesn't have to be the fanciest sake that costs a lot, but at least go for a sake that's made for drinking and not the cooking sake. Ozeki or Shochikubai is cheap and it usually comes in a large bottle and works well for the tare sake spray. Just don't get nigori sake as it's definitely a little bit too sweet and too cloudy for cooking purposes. For mirin, I recommend going with real home mirin. Now there's aji mirin, honteri, variety of mirin type of condiments that usually have extra sugar or extra extra salt in it. If that's all you can find, go ahead and use that, but just be aware that extra salt or extra sugar, just read the ingredients and adjust the tare recipe accordingly. So less soy sauce if there's salt in it, less sugar if there's already syrup or some sort of sugar in that alternative meeting. All right, so the last one is more along a feedback slash question, but every so often I do see some comments along the lines of, I love what you do, how can we support you? So the easy answer to that is thumbs up, write in the comments, subscribe, and tell all your friends about this channel. However, if you're really enjoying and appreciating all the ad-free videos so far, I always love getting chickens from you guys, so here's the link below. Yaki Gang supporters have sent me over 270 chickens so far, and those funds have definitely helped in upgrading my equipment and paying for the cost of my ingredients so I can continue making these videos for you guys. And I've also used those funds to make some small batch merch. And another way to support is if you're looking for any yakitori ingredients, ingredients, skewers, charcoal, knives, just go to my Amazon shop, which I mentioned earlier, and the link is in the description. Lastly, just share my recipe and the yakitori you guys make to all your friends and family. Just keep on tagging Yaki Gang, Yakitori Guy. Just spread my channel and continue spreading what I do. My mission is to continue to spread good yakitori, and you guys have been amazing support for me so far. All right, that's it for today's recap of all the popular questions from last year. Make sure to subscribe so you guys will be notified of the next video coming up of the top 10 ways to make your yak like a pro. I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.